Some military experts are hopeful that new technology will make battles cleaner and shorter. Britain's Defence Science and Technology Laboratory has run simulations with Allied forces to give military personnel the experience of working with new technology in war situations. The sorts of things that we're trying to see here is, well, how can we control that data? How can we give uh, commanders of the future better visualizations of the data that they've got before them so that they can make decisions quicker, communicate those decisions to other nations, and then make the appropriate decisions to fight effectively and quickly and overwhelmingly in the future? Key to the whole operation is ISTAR, intelligence, surveillance, targeting, acquisition and reconnaissance. It's the eyes and ears of the network and the way military information is collected, collated and distributed to allied forces. What we're actually experimenting with is how we can move the information that is derived from those ISTAR capabilities across the network into the command and battle space management systems which can then manipulate that information to inform the commanders of all the components, land, sea, air and joint. One British firm working at DSTL is Ultra Electronics. Their mapping system is better than the current manual one, allowing battle commanders to harness new technology to decision making. Using the electronic system here, which we worked very closely with the British Army in developing, allows us to draw it once and then move things around electronically, and their output is of course automatically tidy because the computer is drawing the symbols rather than having to use stencils uh, and tidy things up afterwards. It's hoped that harnessing new technology to military exercises will allow battle chiefs to target the enemy and bring a speedy end to conflict. Britain's military encourages its most innovative designers to come up with new combat solutions, running a regular competition to locate the best and brightest ideas. From flying helicopters to all-terrain vehicles, all are on show at the Ministry of Defence's Grand Challenge. The competition is an opportunity for companies and educational centres to develop new technologies. On show are all kinds of gadgets designed to make soldiers safer and more efficient while providing an edge on gathering vital intelligence. One of the trends present at this year's show are automated devices that can be deployed in dangerous situations by the military. Some of the robots can be operated from relatively safe locations thanks to laptops or handheld devices. One company exhibiting three of its remote-controlled helicopters is Sagentia. Its designers have built three helicopters varying in size and the distance they can travel. The larger one is powered by a small petrol engine and was recently put through its paces by being flown across the English Channel. David Jones from Sagentia says they are focusing on visual detection. Our approach really is to use a visual detection, looking at the targets essentially using a camera where you have the helicopter based hovering over the area of interest. On board, the helicopter can carry a video camera that relays live pictures to the controller. Helicopters can be piloted by soldiers equipped with a laptop and virtual reality glasses. No need for a complicated joystick, pilots simply use a handheld device with built-in motion sensors. Jones says the helicopter actively looks for potential targets and then processes the collected data. This helicopter essentially goes backwards and forwards looking for targets of interest. We use image processing then to analyze where are likely areas of interest. And then you sort of move it, so move it that way, you send it in that direction, move it that way, brings it back, down here, and then you've got the mouse for up down, and then it sort of goes up and down depending on the mouse wheel. And uh, essentially you have a look, view in the old uh, virtual reality glasses, you can see the scenery as if you were actually in the, in the um, uh, helicopter itself. So you fly o over the wall, have a look around, and pop back. Another company competing in the Grand Challenge is Mindsheet. The company has developed a remote-controlled all-terrain vehicle used to search for IEDs, improvised explosive devices. It was developed with feedback from British soldiers who have served in Afghanistan. Raglan Tribe from Mindsheet says they have experienced soldiers in their team. In this situation, we went and got some soldiers to join our team who have come back from Afghanistan. And under their guidance, we're developing a concept which we hope will win the grand challenge. The developers hope their remote-controlled vehicle will one day be part of the kit soldiers use in dangerous situations. The robot that we've made is actually built on a remote control platform. It's an expensive toy, but it's very durable. You can actually drop it, 
you can carry it on your back, and you can control it from a PDA where you can see a map view, for instance, and then you can designate where it needs to go to. On hand to inspect the teams is Mark Welland from the Ministry of Defence. He says one of the major trends on show are automated devices that reduce the risks soldiers face. The trend is towards um, being able to sense remotely, to interrogate remotely, and to do that without having, having minimal uh, human intervention. Also on show are two all-terrain vehicles developed by Thales in conjunction with the University of Reading and Ryland Research. Dubbed SICK, this device has been designed by Reading University and can be equipped with motion sensor cameras. Another all-terrain vehicle is a firefighting tracked robot developed by Ryland. Finally, Carvec has unveiled its new remote-controlled helicopter which can relay high-definition pictures to soldiers in the field. Demonstration and appraisal by the military of these new small surveillance drones occurred recently at the British Army's urban warfare training centres at Copehill Down Village on Salisbury Plain. The futuristic vehicles equipped with high-tech cameras and sensors are designed to detect a range of threats including roadside bombs and snipers. The information is fed back to a control centre where commanders on the ground can decide what action to take. The Cortex team have designed an unmanned aerial vehicle that has the advantage of vertical landing and takeoff and can hover near a target. It's essentially a vertical takeoff and landing platform which acts as both a helicopter and an aeroplane. The cost of the vehicles ranges from tens of pounds for the smaller planes to tens of thousands for mini helicopters and twin tracked buggies. The Myra team have built a vehicle that includes a balloon and a flying saucer-like probe for observation. It looks very like a flying saucer. It actually work, uh, works on the uh, Karanda effect. Uh, it's designed really for uh, low to medium level flight. It can go higher, but it, its novelty and its advantages are flying at very low, very stable platform, uh, flying in and around uh, buildings and things and in an urban environment where it can bump into things, bump off without anything nasty happening. Uh, it can hire, carry quite a high payload uh, and one of the uh, things of great use to the army that we, ex we hope and we expect is it can carry a stabilised camera to fly over and hover and look down at things on the ground like IEDs um, in a, you know, uh, very easily, very safely. Another use for remote vehicles is rescue of wounded or injured soldiers, removing them from a hazardous situation without risking other soldiers' lives to carry them. I think there's some very clever ideas out there and it's wonderful to see both industry and academia getting together because as you're well aware there's an amalgam of teams out there from industry and academia trying to produce something for us for the future. Even the old barrage balloon may make a comeback. Equipped with the cameras, it could provide wide area surveillance. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, are probably best known for their military uses. Their cameras and radar are used to gather intelligence during warfare and carry out routine espionage without risking the lives of pilots. They are controlled from the ground by operators who program onboard guidance computers. Airborne longer and cheaper than helicopters, they have been used in all kinds of missions, from border patrols to crop spraying. In the wake of the July terror attacks in London, Britain is looking to use the technology for surveillance of vehicles and individuals. The ability to follow uh, potential suspects in complex urban terrain is something that this kind of system gives you a very, very important military capability in this war. Regulators will insist on stringent collision avoidance radar and what the designers call flight termination systems, self-destruct if all else fails.